Pretty cool, isn't it? Wheaton Hall Bug House. Um, hello, people. It's the Bank Holiday Monday, the day after St. Patrick's Day, okay? And I'm in a housing estate here on the south side of Drada called Wheaton Hall, okay? My, my sister lives over here in, that's called a Acorn Way. <clears throat> so I'm just going to let a little walk around Drada here, my friends. So this estate here, right? was built, I think, in the early 90s. I don't know whether it started in 1990 uh, or 19, 1991 or 1992. But anyway, my sister bought a bungalow, right? Just like these houses here, right? Uh, back in, I think it was 1992 or 1993. And she paid, or her and her husband paid, 54,000 forward at the time now we uh, we went to the to the euro in 2002 so if she had bought it in 1993 it, if it was in euros it would probably have been around 38,000 to 40,000 euros for this bungalow right so by the time um, of the financial crash in 2008 these houses were selling for, for over 300,000, 320,000, imagine that. Up to 350,000 at the time, crazy money. So this now is a nice, this is like, so this is now a nice mature, mature um, estate. You see this house just here, right? I remember that was um, a show house at the time. They were selling this, but this estate, right, was built by a company called Shannon Holmes, right? And this estate, come back in the early 90s, won um, an award, I think the best new estate in the whole of Ireland at the time. This estate here. That, so there's different houses, like you've got two-storey houses over here, and you've got th those bungalows, so you, a bigger two-storey ones down there. You've got semi-detached ones over here. Yeah, so, now I'm going to walk down towards the Black Bull area, the pub, and show you the pub, okay? Now I don't know how much those houses in there would have been, probably around 400,000, probably more, just before the crash of 2008, not a big financial crash, and of course, <clears throat> The political party that was in power at the time of the crash was Fianna Fáil, right? And of course, everybody going around saying, oh, if you're going to vote, you should vote Fianna Fáil. They're the only uh, party who can run the country. So no one can run the country better than Fianna Fáil. And then the whole crash thing happened. This is lovely here, isn't it? Nice little area here, isn't it? I'll just sit down here, my friends, for a minute, in Wheaton Hall. Now, of course, all these trees, when they come into bloom now, uh, it's just lovely, lovely, you know, driving in here or walking in here with all the leaves on the trees, you know. But yeah, as I said, my sister and her husband bought their house in here, I think it was in 1993, for £54,000, right? That was in Irish punts. If it was, in euros, um, it would have been around 38, <clears throat> 38 to 40,000 euros, right? And they still live here and they've no mortgage. Isn't that amazing? So the people of that generation who came in in the 90s and bought their houses then, I'd say they're all um, mortgage free. And unfortunately, their children are the ones who are suffering now because they just can't afford the outrageous uh, price of a house, the mortgage. They can't even afford um, the price of rental accommodation, you know what I mean? So yeah, they can't, they can't even get on the property market, you know, just pure and utter uh, selfish capitalist greed. And there's a, it, it, it's a huge issue here now in Ireland, huge. There's the, the housing crisis, 
the homeless crisis and then there's the refugee crisis, right? So we have, I think, over 11 or 12,000 of our own Irish people <coughs> homeless, right? And then <coughs> the government are allowing all these refugees and asylum seekers into the country uh, with nowhere to put them, okay? And the people are up, in, are up in arms over it. Now, personally speaking, I'm not the kind of person that's that, that stops at the, the hotel down the, down the road here, the D Hotel, they're putting 500 asylum seekers into it, right? And of course all the locals came out with their Irish flags and coming down and protesting. I'm not one of them people, you know. It's not, it's not the refugees' fault, it's, it's, the, it's the government's fault for allowing the people in with nowhere to put them. But there's an awful lot of anger because of... <clears throat> there's so many young people on housing lists for years and a lot of these foreigners are getting are getting housed, okay? There's an awful lot of anger to do with that. But as I said, I'm not into um, condemning any any human being. N not, not one human being. I even don't like calling them asylum seekers or refugees or uh, what do you call it, I I economic migrants, you know what I mean? They're human beings just like you and I, you know what I mean? Yeah, so there's an election coming up, my friends. So if you're so angry, just get rid of the present government, the Fianna Fáil, the Fine Gael, and the cult party that I call the Green Party. Get rid of them. Bring in someone else. But, you know, you know yourself, you bring in a new party, and after a while, you start giving out about them, and you want to get rid of them. And I suppose that's what you call democracy, isn't it? Democracy my arse, my friends. Democracy my arse. Right, I'll wander off a bit more, okay? Instead of waffling out here, myself here, okay? Isn't it just great to see all the daffodils? It just really tells you that the spring is definitely here. So in here, people, is um, a dairy, right? Now, I'm looking at a sign up here in Irish saying Tearlawn, Tier right? But I think that used to be Glenbia, not a big, big company called Glenbia, right? But originally, um, the dairy that was it that was here originally was called Ryan's Dairy. So it was it was a man that started off the dairy called Ryan, right? And it was a family, a family-owned business, and then obviously he sold it, and then Glen Glenbia Glen um, have it. And here is um, the Black Bull. Pub here. And you know something? In the early 90s, see look, Black Bull in. In the early 90s, there used to be, um, there was a, there was a, 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 resi a residency here from a, a local band called Who's Who. Um, made up of three three guys, um, Phil Phil McLaughlin, David Leddy, and Aidan Rice. Okay, and they played up here for three years, every Friday for three years. And um, along along here, where, where the bar is now, uh, that's they, they started in the front bar, right? And then they went out to the lounge in the back. And I used to live for every Friday evening to see that band playing and um, yeah because uh, I used to hang around with a group of guys right and one of, one of the one of the lads was a nephew of Phil McLaughlin and we decided to go up there to watch them playing right and I always remember the very first gig that I seen them in the Black Bull I was wearing a Tin Lizzy t-shirt and when I came in Phil McLaughlin right this before they even started playing. It was, it, it was this man, he cut his hair was receded, right? And he was smoking a pipe. And I was thinking to myself, Jesus, these are not going to be much good, right? Until they started playing. And they were fantastic, my friends, fantastic. And I used to live for Friday nights for three years up in this pub here called the Black Bull. 
I don't know does anybody remember remember uh, who's who, but I only heard recently that um, Phil passed away, and uh, God, I was, I was shocked and saddened by that because that man would have would have had I don't know whether he have any idea, but I was in a job at the time and I hated the job, you know, and uh, so I hated the job. So the only thing I had to look forward to was every Friday evening up here in the Black Bull being entertained by who's who and when I had a few drinks of me right they used to play loads of cover songs right and one of the songs they used to play was a song from Billy Joel I can't think the name of the song but it was to do with the um, Vietnam War right and it would go like uh, you know remember Charlie and we will all go down together right so Every time they'd play that song, I'd hop up on a chair, stand up on a chair in a full, full uh, place full of people, right? With a bottle, a beer bottle, and I'd be singing the song. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, of course, the next day when you're sober and you realise what you've done, you, I'd, I'd be embarrassed as hell, right? And um, what do you call it? My friend at the time, he'd come out to me and he'd say, Gee, that was a great night last night, was And they go, oh no, I'm embarrassed as hell. I stood up on the, on, 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 the, on the table singing the song. I'm not doing that again, I'm too embarrassed. And of course, he'd persuade me to go back out again, right? So I'd go back out again and um, say, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it, I'm not, I'm not hopping up in a chair. I'm not hopping up in a cha chair and standing up and singing out a bottle. And then every time, Who's Who would play that song, that Billy Joel song, what would I do? I'd get up onto the chair and start singing out a bottle to the song. Crazy stuff, my friends. As if I was hypnotised or something. Yeah, but th those were great days, if anybody remembers that. Who's Who playing in the Black Bull. Now, I'm on the south side of Drawdy here. And this place here now, right, um, I still... When I'm passing by here, I still call this Flow Gas. So this was the headquarters in the town here of Flow Gas, the, the gas company. Now it's just, it's a, so you've got a Southside Medical, you have Asian Supermarket, and you have a Dublin Meat Company, and you have um, a pharmacy over there, right? So um, I remember it as Flow Gas. I don't know if anybody else remembers it as Flow Gas. And um, before Flow Gas, it was... Um, a car place, Kieran's, I think it was Reynolds Cars. And I think before Reynolds, it was a Volkswagen, you know, Volkswagen cars. So I don't know if anybody remembers that, right? So that's a little bit of nostalgia there for you uh, back in the days, right? So let's walk now back north into the town of Drada, okay? So this place here, just past the Black Bull car park, is um, Senator Windows. You know their advert on the radio? Senator Windows, we'll protect your home. Yeah, so if you're looking for all double glazed, treble glazed windows and doors and stuff, um, in Drada, that's where Senator Win Win Windows is, right? Just here. I love these houses across the road here, look. See the, the, the single um, semi-detached terrace house two there, and then look at these two stories in the middle. And uh, you see, see the second house here with the, um, the sto low stone wall. There used to be an old man um, that lived there, and as soon as the weather would get kind of warm, You'd, and you'd be passing by, he'd, you'd always see him just sitting on the wall on a cushion, just watching the world go by. But I think the man has passed away since, you know? But yeah, I think they're lovely houses, that whole stretch there, they're all lovely houses, look. Even there. Yeah, I like them, my friends. Glenbia. 
There's some uh, lovely houses along here. On the, this is called the Dublin Road. So I'm still heading, I'm heading kind of north now towards the train station of uh, McBride. This is a train station's name, but there's lovely houses along here, you know. People. So this is the Drawda train station. It's called McBride train station, right? <clears throat> so if you want to go to Dublin by train from here, you'll head south in that direction there. And the commuter train that stops in most of the stations along the way will probably take about 50 minutes. And if you're to get the express train from here to Conley, non-stop from Drawda to Conley, you'd be up there in about half an hour and then you go this way and it swings around to the right here across the viaduct railway bridge across the river Bine if you want to go to Belfast and the best way of course to go to Belfast from here is by the express train okay and look building a huge big place across here apartment buildings or something right but you know, you know what I think is fantastic here, look. See this embankment here, look on both sides of, this, of these steps here. At the uh, McBride train station here. Well, I think it's a great initiative here by the local, the local people around us. In conjunction with Irish Rail. And they're planting all these plants on the banks, look. And when they mature, it's going to look so, 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 so cool. So, I just think it's great. Uh, and people make, you know, small kind of steps like that. And it just, like this, this is going to, when it matures, it's just going to be lovely as you're walking down into town or passing by in the car, you know. I, I love, what do you call it, initiatives like this. It, 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 it helps to enhance, enhance the area that you live in, you know what I mean? So, uh, 10 out of 10 to Irish Rail and the local people who are planting these shrubs and plants on the embankment here at McBride's railway station in Drada. Okay, let's move on again, my friends. Right, people. You see the garage across the way there? It's called Circle K, right? I used to always get my petrol in that garage. I hardly ever get it there anymore. But to me, that, that garage will always be called um, Esso. Hello. Yeah, it was, it was Esso for years and years and years. And it, it wasn't always Circle K, there was other, I can't think the name of some of the, the companies that were doing oil there. But anyway, yeah. So just listening, would you believe me if I told you? This is my first time ever, I mean ever, coming up here in Drada on these steps on the, on, the, on the Dublin Road beside Circle K or the Essel Garage, right? And um, I kind of feel sorry for the people who live down here and the houses here with this big monstrosity apartment complex being built. They would have had years and years and years of living here, right? With the sun coming right down into the gardens and now it's probably been blocked by this big monstrosity right we'll walk up along here see where it goes though, okay god this is a nice area here i don't know if this is called cherry mount or something i i, I if i find out i'll put it up on the video okay I don't know, I'm just reckoning that maybe these houses are here since the 1940s or 50s maybe.
Can you imagine, like, if you were living in that house there all your life, right? And all of a sudden, next door to you is this big apartment complex. Um, now, it'll probably be, be fine, you know what I mean? But having lived there all your life with no one beside you, and then you're going to have loads of residents right beside you. Mad, my friends, it's mad. Yeah, people, so this is the rail be line now that's coming from just over here from uh, McBride's Drada station, right? And it swings, it's heading west now towards the town of Navan. And this railway line, I don't know, it, it, it used to go into the Platten Cement Factory and bring Irish cement up to the port in Dublin and export it, right? I don't know if it still does that. And then if you watch uh, my video about Navan, and I'm talking about the sink mine over there, it's closed up now, at the minute. Uh, well, also, like, Irish Rail brings um, iron ore on this line all the way up to Dublin Port as well. So, personally, I think they should open up this line as a commuter line. Because Drada is, like, suburbia in Drada now, is, like, there's thousands of people here. And Navan is the same. So, I think it, it would be a great idea to open up this line here. That's heading west there now. Heading west, right? Yeah, they should open up that line now from Drada to Navan as a commuter line. I don't know whether they will, but anyway, that's just my thinking on it, my friends. Okay, where else do we go now? Stay tuned, people. I mean, I'm just wandering around, talking a lot of crap, filling in some time, you know yourself. Isn't it great to see? Look, all, uh, you know, the, the spring is here. It's a lovely time of the year, isn't it? Like, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel alive. Yep. Right, people, I'm just driving up along here to show you something very interesting, right? <laughs> well, to me, it was interesting at the, at the time. See one of these houses here, right? On the right. Well, um, it was either 1979 or 1980, the summer of 79 or 70 or 1980. I was working on my summer holidays in one of the houses there. They were building an extension onto it. And something very dramatic happened, my friends, early in the morning, right? And if you stay tuned, I'm going to tell you about it now in about two minutes, okay? Just up here. So stay tuned. Right, people. You see here? I'm, sat I'm standing at a place right here now, where to me, it's like time stood still, never changed. See this abandoned bungalow here, right? And this shed, see this shed, this this, this uh, rusty shed, right? Now they're building an estate in here, look. Now no one lives there anymore. Building a brand new estate, right? Well anyway, back one morning in the summer of 79 or 1980, I was in working on that house up the road there. Next thing you could hear, sirens. Loads of guard of cars and uh, what you call them detectives and everything rushing down here this shed here was an IRA arms dump you know the troubles in Northern Ireland so there was an IRA arms dump here they found mortars and stuff right here that box box head just been here since 1979 1980 the house hasn't changed this little part here hasn't changed 
Um, yeah, so there you go, my friends. Does anybody remember that? Because I do. Right in that shed there was an IRA arms dump. And someone will probably be living in a brand new house right here in the middle of an arms dump. So there you go, my friends. There's something to talk about now, my friends. An arms dump in, an IRA arms dump in the town of Drada. Come back to 1979 or 1980 and the house is still here and it's about to be demolished because they're, they're making progress here in, in this um, house and estate here. Right. Okay. Let's move on again, my friends. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. A little bit more nostalgia about Drada, okay? Or as they say here Drada, in Drada, the locals, Drada. Okay, my friends. Stay tuned. Like that's Millmount just behind me here. There's actually a museum up there and I never visited, visited it and I must. And there's Millmount pub here, right? And um, I'm going down Millmount steps, but I never knew that this, these were actually called pitcher steps. Never knew that, right? But when I was going to secondary school, we used to finish before the CBS school up the road here. And me and my, one of my friends, we used to run up these steps here, right? And, um, hello? Yeah, we used to run up these steps to get up to the CBS school, to get on the school, school bus first and get uh, a good seat on the bus, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't be able to run up and down, my friends. Rain in here again in Ireland, holy shit. Wreck your goddamn head, my friends. Wreck your goddamn head. See these houses here along the steps? Uh, I don't know whether it's just one person or whatever, but during the summertime here, they'd have this looking absolutely lovely. Lovely flowers all along here, roses and whatever, just along there. Gorgeous. Right, people. Down at the bottom of Pitcher Steps or Mill Mound Steps and Ollie's Pub is just there, right? And uh, I'm just looking at some black and white photographs, right? Um, you see, you see, you see just out there, look. So that was a dual carriageway that was built. I'm guessing it was built probably in the early 1970s, right? Because the traffic before that used to drive right up through the middle of the town here. I'll show you in a little while. And the other way lorries were getting bigger and bigger. They used to drive up sh across the, uh, it was called, they called, called the Shop, Shop Street Bridge and up near the Tonsil area, take a, uh, a 45 degree bend across West Street, narrow, narrow West Street, then under a 45 degree bend out of the town of Drada. If you were heading up to Northern Ireland, crazy stuff. But anyway, look, here's some black and white pictures, right, of the area here. And there's, see there, there, that's um that's the steps that's them steps over there right you see this here all these shops here were all just out there but that road is um so yeah so th this was called the bull ring the bull ring prior to demolition you see so that that was called the corner bar so it was a bar even before it was called ollie's right chutes right and actually Chutes are still there, butchers, right? So anyway, okay. Uh, and here's the reason why it was called the Bull Ring. Artist impression of bull baiting location, Bull Ring Drada. Right, so there was a kind of a bull baiting thing here. That's why it's called called the Bull Ring. So Barrack Street, that street going up to here is called Barrack Street, okay? Right people, I'm outside Shop Street Church here and I'm just looking at this big painting on the wall here, right? And this guy here, now I can't pronounce that instrument properly. The Aylin pipes are, you Aylin pipes, right? But anyway, so Taylor Brothers and Shop Street Drada, 1888. Master, I can't pronounce that, you Aylin pipe maker, William Billy Taylor is regarded by many as the greatest piper of his time. He lived in Drada, first at Pitcher Hill, 
and later at Scarlet Street. So he lived up on, on that, those steps that came down there, or that I called Millmount Steps, right? And he emigrated, or immigrated to the United States with his stepbrother Charles in 1872. The brothers promptly set up business in Philadelphia, where Billy famously remodeled the, I can't pronounce them properly, alien pipes into a compact, substantial instrument of powerful tone, which blended agreeably with violin and piano. Billy, renowned musician and mechanic, died in 1901, and his brother and business partner, Charlie, passed about a year later. Both unmarried, their debts were sincerely lamented among Irish pipers in America. So there you go, my friends. So I'm on Shop Street here now, right? And over there is Paddy DeWire's shoe shop. That's the men's shoe shop, okay? That's here way back in the 70s, 80s, right up to the present time. And there's Victor DeWire up there. I think he's a brother, right? And that's the the shoe shop, right? But it's, it's, it's uh, for women, all women's shoes, right? But I remember coming in here with one of my sisters years ago, right? And one of my nieces, she was only about, say, f five maybe, and she was getting a new pair of shoes, right? And she was trying on shoes in the shop there, right? And um, she didn't like, <laughs> she didn't like the shoes, right? And I always remember she grabbed the shoe and she fired it down through the shop in front of the, in front of the, the, the shop uh, assistant, right? And uh, she said, I don't like them. She flung it down, down, down the shop. I thought it was very funny. And of course, <clears throat> my sister was saying to her, in the middle of the shop, wait till I tell your dad what you've done. Wait till I tell your dad what you've done. And I've always remembered that. And that girl, um, I think she's now either, she's 22 or she's going to be 22. Just shows you how old I am, my friends. So she has, she had a rebel spirit in her den. And she still has a bit of a rebel spirit in her. And I always say to her, never lose it. Because I think it's so cool thing to have. Right, anyway. I'm on Shop Street. Um, right, where else am I going to show you here now? See in here, here's um, the Genoa Cafe. Yeah, look. Right. How you doing? That's another place that hasn't changed since the 70s. The Genoa Cafe. Right, now remember what I was saying about... The dual carriageway just back there that was built in about the 1970s, right? And it was built because if you were coming from Dublin and you want and you were going to Belfast, you had to come right up this street here, Shop Street, take the 45 degree bend across West Street here, into narrow into narrow West Street up further. I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes, and then take another 45 degree right out of the town. So yeah. As I said to you, the trucks would have been coming, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So they weren't able to turn here, right? So yeah, and so that's why they built that dual carriageway in the, I reckon it was the early 70s. And subsequently now we have the M1 motorway, which is kind of further over to the west here. That invite, invites the, the town completely, you know what I mean? So now I'm going up Lawrence Street here, okay? And I'm just going to show you a couple of things from back in Lawrence Street, right? So there's a place there called The Merchants. Looks like it's brand new. What's going to be a pub or what? I don't know. And see over here, it's kind of look closed up and dilapidated. Going back in the 1990s and the 2000s, that was called McPhail's, if anybody remembers that. And used to be loads of live bands playing in, playing in there. But look at it now, it's, it's, uh, it's derelict for some reason. But that was a, a super cool place to go to. Um, you get lots of students and that going in there, watching live bands. I often went in there myself, actually. Right, up here in that folder, right. Right, people. So, this is... A cafe restaurant here, it's now called Sai. It looks like a Chinese place. But back in the 70s, I don't know if anybody remembers, it used to be called Reynolds uh, News Agents, right? And I remember, I remember buying a book about Concord 
in there. That shows you how old I am, my friends, in this, in this shop here. And I still have it at home to this day. And see here, this was a... Uh, in there was the... It was a Francis, Franciscan church, right? And the Franciscans used to live in this building here. And now that church is a, a gallery, right? An art gallery in there, right? i just show you one last thing here now on Lawrence Street, right? Across the road here is the Credit Union, okay? And as you can see, it's a lovely brick facade, right? But this place here was originally the grammar school, you know? And um, it, it, the grammar school was kind of like this, but in the old brick, you know what I mean? Old brick and windows, right? So you have the Credit Union in here, in there, and you have the Lawrence Centre, which isn't doing really well at all because there's loads of shops closed down, right? And um, right here, so right here where you would go into the Credit Union just there and into the um, Lawrence's shopping centre, that used to be a laneway here, right? Onto the next street. And I used to go to school up the road there in the tech, it was called the tech, right? And we had no gym up there. So we used to use the grammar school the grammar school gym here. So the gym the gym was just on the right hand side here, right in the middle where this um, shopping centre is, right? And uh, I was crap. <laughs> and when it came to the physical education classes, gym and running and participating in any kind of sports, I was shit. But anyway, now I'm gonna go down what I, what I used to call when I was in school, the back lanes, but they're called the high lanes, right? Let's just show you this now. Yeah, and remember I used to say, tell you about, we, we'd finished in school here before um, the CBS school. And me and my friend, we'd run down the, actually we'd jump from the top step down to here, bombing it down, down here. And uh, I'm gonna show you, we used to play handball down here, okay? Reminiscing down memory lane, my friends. Right, people, do you see, see here now, right? See this building here? Looks like to me now it's uh, apartments, right? Looking back in the 1970s, this car park here wasn't here. There was a building just like this, right here, okay? And remember I was showing you the Franciscan church there that's now a gallery? But back in the 70s, when I was at school in the tech, we were sent down to that church some mass was on, right? So rumour went round in the church was there was going to be a fight down here, right? So of course everybody came down to, to watch this fight. And when I came down here, there was three guys that I knew. Two of them was from my class, right? They were country lads, right? And there was three lads that would have been fifth year, right? So they were the big lads, the big bully boys. And I remember standing here and thinking, oh my God, the people in my class who I know, they're going to be crucified, they're going to be killed. I, I was feeling really anxious and sorry for them that they're going to be beaten up, right? Anyway. I, <laughs> anyway. The fight started just down there, right? And the I'm not going to go into the specifics now of the violence involved, right? But the three lads that were in my class, that were, I thought they were quite, and these bully boys from fifth year, the three lads who I thought were going to be busted, busted the three bully boys from fifth year, right here. And of course they all got expelled because rumour got back to the school and the teachers, so they all got expelled. That happened right here. and then. See, the, see these walls along here? We had about 15 minutes to spare before we got the bus up in the CBS. And myself and my friend, we used to go down, we used to play handball along here. Right down there. 
I don't know if you're interested in all this shit, my friends. I'm just telling you, right? So stay tuned and look up now onto West Street and show you a few things on West Street, okay? From back in the day, in Drada, County Loud. Right people, you see this shop here, it's now a phone and a laptop a repair shop. It's on, it's on the corner of Peter Street and Lawrence Street. But does anybody remember when this was the sound shop? There was, I'll show you here, look. So, there was, this was the upstairs and there was also a downstairs in it here. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was the original sound shop, sound shop before it moved down, down the North Quay. And here's another cafe that's here way back in the 70s. It's still here, the copper kettle, right? So if you ever want to get a nice cup of tea, sandwich, a bowl of soup, try the copper kettle. Now you have to go in and you have to go up the stairs, right? But it's still here, the copper kettle, right? So I'm now on West Street here in Drada. And, um, you see pennies over here. Um, pennies in the early 90s used to be Woolworths. Does that anybody remember Woolworths, right? And you would, uh, when you used to go into Woolworths, on the right hand side was, they, they used to sell um, records and tapes. Like that just shows you again how old I am. Because I used to go in there once a week into Woolworths and I'd buy a new album, a tape, right? Status quo. The police, you know, whatever, in here in this in this shop here. That's now pennies that used to be Woolworths. So does anybody remember Woolworths? Right, I'll walk on further up here, my friends. I might go in there for a cup of coffee on my way back. Um starting to rain here, my friends. So this is the bank holiday Monday, the day after St. Patrick's Day. Uh that's now Tesco's, but that used to be Quinn, Quinn's. Hello people, see here, Noodle Box and Diner, right? Does anybody remember when that used to be called? Um, Yeah, does anybody remember when that used to be called the Four Lanterns, right? So, when you go out on a night out down to the air disco or into the pubs here, you'd finish a night by going into the Four Lanterns here and getting chips and... Um, I used to go for a snack box. I'll tell you a funny story about that, right? You wouldn't think it, right? But I still have a slight stammer, right? Now, I can say snack box, no problem here. I could say it all day here. Snack box, snack box, snack box. But for some reason, I don't know it's a nervous thing or what, when I'd go into a place like this and ask for a snack box, I'd stammer, right? So I'd come in here after, after, the, after the, the nightclub with um, one of my sisters, right? And because I had a few drinks on me, I thought I was brave. And I said to the guy behind the counter, I was going to say, can I have a snack box? But I says, can I have a snack, snack box, please? And he goes, two snack boxes. And uh, my sister started bossing laughing. And I, I could have killed her. But yeah, that's, that's a funny story. Um, Christopher walking, walk-ins welcome. Right. Okay, people, this is Narrow West Street. And can, as you can see, the reason why it's called Narrow West Street is because of this. Look, it's narrow.
Hello, people. See this building across the way here? <clears throat> That's derelict now. Well, in the 1990s, this was a pub. It was one of the places to go in the town, right? And um, I remember one night I was coming back from a nightclub up around the corner here to the right. I was coming by this pub. I was heading down to, to the Earth uh, nightclub, right, from, from the one here, right? And there was a guy outside standing here, real aggressive and, you know, tre threatening violence, right? And there was four bouncers came out, right? And they were kind of afraid of him, right? And he went for them. And the four lads are kind of hang hanging on to him, right? And they're moving around the street here. And it always reminded me of a crab. You know the way a crab goes? It was like that, right? Just right here. So with that, this other bouncer comes out from the, the pub, right? And I, I knew, I knew this, this guy. And I knew he... he, he uh, done karate, right? The four bouncers that were hanging on to your man let go of him and moved back. And this guy stood here and your man took a shot off, real aggressive. Come on, I'll take the whole lot of on. Your man walked up to him and within two moves had your man on the ground out here on the street. Um, Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always remember that. That was from the 1990s, my friends. Narrow Westry, and look at it now. Most of the buildings here are all derelict, my friends. Right, people, it's raining here. So, uh, I'm going to end the video here, my, my friends, right? So, um, stay tuned. Um, as usual, my friends, I have no idea where my next video is going to come from, but it's going to come from somewhere. So, press the notification bell to know when the next video will be uploaded. They're normally up on a Sunday after 5 p.m. And if you like the video, please press like. And if you're new to the channel, please press subscribe. It's free, okay? So, uh, until next Sunday, take care, my friends. Bye.